I'm Helen Wooldridge, this is Polly Marsh, we're from Cuddle Dry Limited based in Somerset. We're here today to secure £100,000 worth of investment in return for a 15% share in our business. One of the most stressful times for any new parent is when they come to lift a baby out of the bath. You need two hands in order to lift a baby safely, confidently. At the same time, you need a third hand in order to hold up a towel, which is impossible. So parents struggle. They hold a towel in their teeth, possibly under their chin, and many resort to putting a baby on a cold and draughty floor. We've come up with a product that solves all these problems. The Cuddle Dry Baby Bath Towel. You wear the towel like an apron. It gives you that all important two hands free to safely lift your baby out of the bath, straight onto your chest, where you wrap them quickly in the fabric, hooking the hood over their head, keeping that all important warmth in, and literally cuddle them dry. When you're ready to dress your baby, release it with one hand, lie the baby down, still snugly wrapped inside the fabric. We launched this product to the nursery trade just nine months ago. We immediately secured our first 10 independent retailers and our first multiple chain retailer, and that was Mother Care, where our sales have been consistently strong ever since. We now have 40 independent retailers, and we're in um, very positive discussion with two other leading nursery retailers. This is not just a nursery item, but it's also an ideal gift, which quadruples our potential um, customer base. Thank you very much for listening. Are there any questions? In a polished presentation, Polly Marsh and Helen Wooldridge from Somerset have asked the Dragons to invest £100,000 in their innovative baby bath towel. They're offering 15% of their company in return. Hi, Helen. I'm James. Nice Hi, to James. meet you. Um, I love the feel. It's fabulous. Very, very nice. What's the price? It retails at $24.99. And where do you make this? It's manufactured currently in China. What's the cost of the product landed in the UK? £7.50. What do you wholesale it for? £14.99. So you make a 100% markup on that, yeah? And what's your business plan looking like over the next two or three years? What's your projections? Turnover? Yeah. Um, next year, 145,000. Yeah. Following year, 250,000. And the year after that, 450,000. What would your net profit be? So after all expenditure? In year one, £50,000. But we wouldn't take um, a salary until September next year. Year two, £88,000. But in year two, are you now taking a salary? We would be taking a salary from September onwards. We would take £20,000. Whereas the subsequent years, it would be a full year of salary, so we'd be taking £30,000. That's oh. between us. And in the year three, what's your projections? If it was 50, 88, 178. OK. Polly has set out confident financial forecasts. Now Deborah Meadham wants to know how the young company will achieve such rapid growth. Helen, Polly. I'm Deborah. Um, can you tell me what the structure of the business at the moment? Who owns the business? Who works in the business? We have one investor who owns 5% of the business. The remainder is split 50-50 between us. So at the moment, there's just the three of you working in the business? Mm, there's other people who work for free. Yes. Like our husbands. Um, Polly's husband manages all the stock. My husband um, manages um, customer satisfaction and sort of spot checks with our customers to make sure that they're getting... Okay, so to achieve these numbers, yeah. what do you see as the structure of your company? Well, we would have to employ somebody, first and foremost, probably on a part-time basis yeah, to start initially. with, and then developing into full-time. Ladies, can I, can I ask you, in your projections, you said year three turnover was 450? Correct, yeah. Right, okay. If you're turning over 450,000... Yes. Yeah? So you sold 450,000. Yes. Half of it goes to cost to manufacture. Yes. Okay, that leaves you about 225,000. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to make, you say, £178,000 clear profit after you pay all your expenses. Mm -hmm. So your overhead cost can only be the difference between your profit yes. and your gross margin. So our overheads will be £47,000 in that year. Of which 30000 is going to be your, co your salaries. Yeah? So for £17,000, you're going to run a half a million pound business. You're going to pay for distribution costs, advertising costs, light electricity, staff, other staff costs everything else that needs to be done to run a business with £17,000. 
Do you honestly think that's realistic? That, uh, that doesn't add up to me in my brain. So there's obviously... I'm only working on the numbers you've given me. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And how much are you saying this company's worth? £600,000. It's a disastrous turn of events. Theo Pafitis has worked out that Polly and Helen have underestimated their overheads in their financial projections, inadvertently inflating their profits as a result. Peter Jones is ready to enter the fray. You're not the first, and you won't be the last, that comes into the den and actually overvalues their business. And in fact, I don't know anybody that hasn't. Mm. Um, for me, what you have done, though, is you've, probably for the first time ever in the den, you've made the most convincing argument and presentation based on inaccurate financial forecasts that I think I've ever seen. Is that a compliment? <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't think the business is sustainable. And if I gave you £100,000, it would just go down the drain. This is something just to enjoy, do it yourself, scale it up, carry on. But this isn't something that an investor is going to give you money at this stage, so I'm going to say I'm out. Peter Jones has delivered a stinging rebuke and withdrawn. Have Polly and Helen done enough to convince the other dragons they have what it takes to move the business forward? Helen, Polly, I really like the product and I think you two are nearly great, but it was really disappointing that your numbers have fallen apart. But there's still something there. You've produced a product, you've got it into mother care, mm -hmm. it is selling, but I'm going to make you an offer. Great. And I'm going to offer you all of the money for 45% of the business. Thank you. In a dramatic turnaround, Deborah Meaden has seen potential in the product and offered Polly and Helen the £100,000 they need. But she's demanding a 45% stake in their company three times more than they were planning to give up. Now, Theo Pafitis is ready to show his hand. You've done exactly what normal creative people do. You focus purely on the product and forgotten about what makes things happen, and that is profit. Otherwise, there's no point. I wish you the best of luck, but for those reasons, I won't be investing and I'm out. OK, thank well, you. Well, thank you. You know, I was toying with an idea of, of making you an offer and wrote down 50%, that that would only leave you each with about 23.5%. And I just thought, after a few months, you would start becoming a bit naffed off. You're still working 24 hours a day to get this, this running. So because I think it would disenfranchise you, I'm not going to make an offer. I'm going to say uh, I'm out. Three dragons out, but one offer for the full amount. Only James Khan has yet to declare his position. As it is today, with one single product, it's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But actually, I can imagine this being a range. Yeah. You know, where you could have the robes, you could have the mother robe, you could have smaller towels, you could have flannels, and you end up in a situation where you have a section in mother care or an independent. You know, and I think on that basis, your numbers could be better than you're projecting. I would like to make you an offer. Great. Um, then I'm happy to put the entire amount in for 40%. In an attempt to steal the deal from under the nose of his rival dragon, James Khan has undercut Deborah Meaden by 5%. But the duo were originally prepared to part with just 15% of their equity. So can they persuade either of the competing investors to lower their bids? OK, the percentage is it's huge. <laughs> difficult for us because obviously we do want to retain control of our business and we have... Well, that's, you're right, and that's why I pitched it at 45%, because it means between you and your 5% admin, you've actually still got that. OK. But it's obviously a lot, more, a lot more than, than we wanted to give wanted away. To give away. Um, we need to have a look can we that. consult? Oh, bloody hell, what are we going to do? I don't know. It's a lot. What about James? Yeah. Okay. 
obviously this is very difficult, but the maximum that we can go to is 35%. And so we pass that back to you and if there's, uh... to see if there's scope for that. Um, I think that this is an interesting situation because mm. you'd like to give 35% mm. yeah. and Deborah would like 45%. Mm. So I think the gap between 45 and 35 is at 40. And I think in business normally one tries to meet in the middle in a position to be fair. Um. No, I have made you what I think is a very fair offer. I just don't negotiate. I, I make what I think is fair in the first place. Um. <laughs> We're thrilled yeah. that we've got to this point, but we have made an agreement. Yeah. And we're going to say thank you, thank you so much. Um, but we're going to stick to our guns and 35 is our maximum. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. To the astonishment of the Dragons, Polly and Helen have refused to sacrifice a substantial stake in their business in return for the cash and expertise of the potential investors. Instead, they're leaving the den empty-handed. That is, that is a shame, I, I have say, to you say. You two are pretty lucky to get away with that. Yeah. No, I don't agree. I can imagine walking into a store and seeing a whole range of this stuff. Polly. Hello, Evan. Helen, well done. Are you quite sure you've done the right thing? Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely what we agreed to. And 35 was the was, limit? It was our it limit. Was. It was very tempting, yeah. just very tempting. to go with it. It, it sort of sounded like they were uncovering costs that you hadn't thought of all the way along. I knew the numbers, I just didn't know exactly what each one really meant. So when they started picking them apart, it was difficult. It was tough. We'll see how you get on. Thank you all very right. much. Well Thank you.